Musa honored the agreement he made with the old man and stayed in Medean for many years. When the agreement had come to an end, Musa and his family left Medea. On their journey, Musa saw a fire in the distance, on the side of the Mount Sinai, which he was passing by with his family. When they reached it, God called out to the prophet Musa, giving this revelation. Musa, I am your Lord. Take off your sandals. You are in the holy valley of Tuwa. I have chosen you, so listen well to what is revealed. I am God. There is no God but me. So worship me and establish prayer to remember me. This was the first revelation Musa received. He was now a messenger of God. God told Musa to put down his staff. The staff suddenly turned into a snake. At this, the prophet Musa began to flee. Yet God told him not to be afraid and revealed that he was in safety. The prophet Musa picked up his staff. That staff would later be the first miracle he would employ against Pharaoh. God gave the prophet Musa a second miracle. He put his hand to his shirt front, and when he brought it out again, it was pure white, without blemish. With these miracles and his commands, God told the prophet Musa to go to Pharaoh. He also made Musa's brother Harun a prophet and a companion to the prophet Musa. Go to him and say, "We are your Lord's messengers." So send the tribe of Israel away with us, and do not punish them. We have brought you a sign from your Lord. Peace be upon those who follow the guidance. Musa appeared before Pharaoh with these words, but Pharaoh sought to deny these words instead of paying heed to them. Pharaoh and those around him thought that the prophet Musa's aim was to seize power by changing the traditional religion of Egypt. That was because Pharaoh and his circles obtained great benefits from that religion. If that religion were to change, Pharaoh would lose all his power. Musa's intention was far from desiring to rule Egypt. Musa's request was for the release of the children of Israel. Who had been living under the most terrible conditions? In response to that request, Pharaoh said the prophet Musa had been raised in the palace and brought up the question of the man he had killed. Musa's response to all such mistreatment was one particular to a true believer who unconditionally submits to his destiny and has a full grasp of its implications. He, Musa, said, "At the time I did it, I was one of the misguided, and so I fled from you when I was in fear of you. But my Lord gave me right judgment and made me one of the messengers." Finding himself in a difficult position in the face of the Prophet Musa's powerful words and proofs, Pharaoh uttered the slander that Musa was mad. He also threatened the prophet Musa with prison unless he recognized Pharaoh's alleged divinity. At these words, the prophet Musa revealed the proofs, the sign of his prophethood. So he threw down his staff, and there it was, unmistakably a serpent. Pharaoh and those around him claimed that what they had seen could only be done by magic. That was because they were so blindly devoted to the pagan religion they had inherited from their ancestors. They set out to find rivals to the prophet Musa, whom they had accused of being a magician. News of this reached the greatest magicians of the land. The prophet Musa chose a festival as the time for the encounter. That was because he wished all the people of Egypt to witness the truth.
Pharaoh's magicians were ready to display their skills. The ropes and staffs they threw down appeared to be genuinely moving towards the Prophet Musa. These events are described in the Quran. Musa experienced in himself a feeling of alarm. We said, have no fear, you will have the upper hand. Throw down what is in your right hand, it will swallow up their handiwork. Their handiwork is just a magician's trick. Magicians do not prosper wherever they go. Then Musa threw down his staff. The result was terrifying for the magicians. As they were deceiving people by making them believe that things were actually moving around, the Prophet Musa's staff swallowed up all their spells. The magicians threw themselves down in prostration. They said, We believe in the Lord of Harun and Musa. This miracle by the Prophet Musa was a means whereby the magicians came to believe in God. Yet Pharaoh was so arrogant that he threatened those sincere people who had chosen to believe with death. Pharaoh said, Do you believe in him before I have authorized you? He is your chief, the one who taught you magic. I will cut off your hands and feet alternately and have you crucified on palm trunks. Then you will know for certain which of us has the harsher and longer lasting punishment. The magician's response to Pharaoh revealed the sincerity of their belief and their courage. They said, We will never prefer you to the clear signs which have come to us, nor to him who brought us into being. Decide on any judgment you like. Your jurisdiction only covers the life of this world. We have had faith in our Lord so that he may forgive us for our mistakes and for the magic which you have forced us to perform. God is better and longer lasting. The magician's defeat by the prophet Musa and their later turning to faith clearly revealed the twisted nature of the pharaonic system. Pharaoh was left with nothing rational to say, but stubbornly and arrogantly denied the existence of God and the prophethood of Musa.